uh, we will start with Max uh, Wiesner from Harvard. Uh, if you could share your screen. Um, <laughs> Um, can you see my screen? Not yet. No, not yet. All right. So the talk is like strings and strong coupling. So take it away. Thanks, Gary. And thanks, Gary and Marcus for keeping up with this very nice um, series of talks and for the opportunity for me to speak here today. Um, I want to talk about some recent work that I've been working on um, with Fernando uh, Machesano in the last half a year or something. And it's based it's essentially two papers, uh, one with Fernando and one by myself, uh, where I want to discuss the connection between strong coupling and live strings in 4D NFP1 setups. So the first one is um, with Fernando, and then the second one is a little bit um, applying the results with OFFEC that I obtained with Fernando to a setup that, to a related setup that I investigated last year with Daniel Clever, Saint Julie, and Timo Weigert. So, let me get started. I think to this audience, I don't need to introduce much of this one program. That's why I think it's fine if I just have this very rudimentary uh, diagram of this one program, which is essentially saying, okay, we want to we want to understand which effective field theories can be consistently coupled to gravity, giving consistency of quantum gravity. And we want to delineate or like to, to separate them from, from those that cannot be consistently coupled to gravity to quantum gravity and they're said to belong to the swampland. And this, this border between these two sets of EFTs um, is what, what we are interested in the swampland program. And this should be some in, this should be delineated by some consistency conditions imposed by quantum gravity. Uh, so there are different techniques to approach to approach um, this this uh, this question what are, what are the consistency conditions for quantum gravity theories. And one very nice uh, way is to study extended objects such as strings. And in this talk, I will focus mostly on strings. For instance, one can just look at strings in supergravity and constrain, for instance, the 60 gauge groups or the, of supergravity or the 50 supergravity um, gauge group, as in these papers over the last years. Or another interesting perspective is just to look at how in 40 EFTs, um, such strings can, can probe infinite distances and how one can interpret these infinite distances as RG flow of so-called axionic strings. On the other hand, one can look directly at string, reali string theory realizations and one possibility or, or, or one, one way strings enter in this, in, this in this context are that, for instance, they can furnish the light tower of space that become infinite, uh, become infinite light at the, the infinite distances as required by the strong hand distance conjecture. Or one can see how the excitation of this string can, can yield super extreme ch uh, charged states as required for the weak gravity conjecture. I won't particularly focus on 40 strings, so strings in 40 theories, which are a little bit more difficult to study than their cousins in 60 or 50 theories. Because strings are charged on a two form gauge symmetry, which is, which is dual to an axion in 4D. And so this axionic shift symmetry in 4D gets broken by non perturbative effects. Such that, for instance, one, one, one question is how do we actually define a, the string or the string tension away from the coupling limits, where essentially this, this axionic shift symmetry is unbroken? In string theory realization, also typically the tension is given the classical tension is just given by some by the compactification geometry, for instance, by the volume or the inverse volume of the, of the Calabrian fourfold in type two compactification or certain curves in an F theory compactification. But this does not necessarily need to be true at the quantum level. And um, so one has to take into to account corrections, but this might lead, as, as we saw in, in, in this one in this series of papers, that the classical reasoning must not necessarily need to apply if we are not in a strict recoupling regime, where we can ensure that all these, all these breaking effects are, are, are suppressed. So the question is what happens away from recoupled, weakly coupled regimes? So what could possibly go wrong if we go away from this regime? One possibility are obstruction to the so-called emergent string limit. So the emergent string conjecture tells essentially, I forgot the, uh, the reference here, was on one of the uh, earlier slides that um, if we have an infinite distance limit that is not uh, uh, at the compactification limit, then the tower of light states required by the gravity, uh, by the, by the strong distance conjecture comes from the tower of excitations of a weakly coupled tensionless and critical string. But however, 
The classical recoupling limits can be actually obstructed, for instance, uh, as this perturbative F theory analysis in, in this reference showed. So one question is, it, what, what does actually this, this per, per, perturbative obstruction mean at the non-perturbative level? And more importantly, what happens to this would-be emerging critical string in the case that we have an obstruction? On the other hand, if you look at the back reaction of EFT strings or strings that, that have a back reaction such that in the vicinity of the string, we can talk about a weakly coupled EFT for which all non-perturbative effects are, are suppressed. So these strings are charged under a two-form B field. And the back reaction of these strings give rise to a, to a profile for the dual scale, complex scalar field, which I indicated here, essentially this logarithm. But due to this logarithm, essentially, we cannot ensure that we always stay in the weakly coupled regime. So if we move away from the string, we actually always reach a regime of strong coupling. So one question is away from this weak coupling, away from the vicinity of the strings, what happens of, to such string solutions? So I would like to, um, to address in this talk, I would like to address the following questions. So first, in this F theory setup that I mentioned before, that were initially studied in this paper, and that where we saw at the, at the perturbative level that there are obstructions, what happens to this? Can we say something at the non-perturbative level? Can we, can we go more than just say, okay, we, we lose our perturbative control, that's why we see an obstruction. What actually happens in this, in this uh, limit where we don't necessarily have a weakly coupled theory? Is there a non-perturbative singularity or does the obstruction somehow get resolved at the non-perturbative level? Second, if there is such a non-perturbative singularity or so non-perturbative obstruction, what is the fate of this light critical string that we, have, that we associate with this emergent string limit that was studied here? And third, can we describe, and this is somehow, maybe at first you think it's not related, but in the end it is related, I, as I want to show, can we describe the back reaction of such EFT strings that we, nice, that we typically just zoom into the, to the weakly coupled regime? Can we do this? Can we describe the back reaction beyond the weak? The three point I want to make in this um, in this talk is that actually also in the F theory model the space we can in certain cases extract some non-perturbative um, uh, structure of the modular space geometry in precisely the regions where we have a light critical string. We can in particular identify strong coupling singularities in this local F theory modular space where we have classically a light critical string. Second, the back reactions of EFT strings be beyond the weakly coupled region can be regulated in such a way that, um, that the tension of the entire string solution remains finite. But this requires that if we go beyond the weakly coupled region, that we introduce additional strings that essentially regulate the, the solution in such a way that the full tension of, the, of this, of this or the full energy stored in this back reaction remains subtracting. And third, Combining these two first points, at the singular point in, in this F theory modulate space, using this, this second analysis, I want to show that, in fact, the critical string that one would naively associate with the emergent string limit leaves the spectrum of light strings, and therefore given an a reason why we see such obstruction in the emergence for, of, against emergent string limits in F theory, because simply we don't have the string that we would na naively associate with this infinity an infinitely weakly coupled infinite distance limit in F theory. So what is the setup of the first part? Let us consider F theory on an elliptic fibered color via of forward. And I want to look at classical decoupling limits in Kähler modular space, where some string becomes light compared to the type to be F theory scale. Essentially, I want, I want a limit where I decouple all the effects that are, that are, that are that scale with the type to be scale, such that I only have the, I only have this, a light string and that essentially the modular space reduces to the modular space associated to the stringy modular space of this light string. If I want this string to be critical, I actually need that the modular space factorizes. So for instance, I can take, I, I will look at the, at the Kähler uh, modular space of the, of the F theory Calabino fourfold compactifications. And I need that this Kähler modular space at least classically splits as some rem remainder Kähler modular space times a factor that essentially gives the tension of this light string. To achieve this, actually, this is on the classical level, this is classified in this paper here. We need that the base of the fourfold is itself either rationally or genus one fiber. I will 
In this talk, focus on the case where, where, it's, a, where it's a rational type ration over some scalar base B2. And now the question is, do we have any information about non-perturbative F3 modular space in this regime? Can we say something about what happens away for, or what happens um, away from weakly coupled regions where this factorization is not necessarily true anymore? So, and the idea is to really exploit this decoupling limit. So, um, because essentially in this limit, the full F theory modular space that has that has effects from other strings uh, that there whose um, tension goes essentially with alpha prime of two b, but in this decoupling limit, the F theory modular space essentially reduces to the modular space of the world sheet CFT of the D three brain on C naught. Since this string is critical, one can actually extract information about the modular space in certain cases, and I will specify this later on. So we want to look something in the to the limit of the string theory limit of F theory, where we really have the modular space given by the world sheet CFT of D3 brain. Let me stress that this is not necessarily the same as the emergent string limit, because I for the string theory limit, I just require that classically this, this the modular space of the of the of the D3 brain decouples from the um, from the full F theory modular space, whereas on the, to talk about an emergent string limit, I would say okay, this should be also true at the quantum level. This is actually similar, analog to the case to the point particle limit in type two A string theory, for instance, where one would associate the point particle limit as the as alpha prime going to zero, alpha prime to A in this case, which for instance in as shown for chi three fiber cover cover B of three folds, one essentially gets the um, cyber written theory, SU2 cyber written theory. But this point particle limit is not, not necessarily the same as the gauge enhancement limit because there might be cor corrections. And as we know, for instance, uh, in cyber written, the gauge enhancement point is actually not always part of the modular space unless we go to infinitely weak coupling. So the strategy is then to analyze the singularity structure of the modular space of the stringy modular space, which in this case will actually be a heterotic modular space. And I don't want to make a full analysis here on that because I actually cannot, but I want to restrict to cases where we can actually analyze the singularity, non perturbative singularity structure uh, explicitly. So I will restrict to cases where the gauge bundle of the heterotic string is given by the standard, uh, by, by the tang tangent bundle or deformation term. So essentially, I want to look at um, standard embedding. Then once I know about the singularity structure in this heterotic modular space, I want to translate this into a singularity in F theory modular space, and then understand the consequences for the light string. Um, yes. So I will now have to look at the local modular space in F theory, which is essentially the Kähler modular space of the dual heterotic string, compactified on an elliptic color bay or three fold. So I need to ensure that actually this local modular space of F theory is uh, the, the, the mod modular space of the heterotic string. So I need to ensure that the F theory heterotic duality holds. And for this to hold, I need, act and I need two ingredients. I need that the, an adiabatic limit, which means essentially that the heterotic vibration of the, of the elliptic fiber over the base B2 is adiabatic, such that the volume of the base is small compared to the volume of the B2. And the stable gen degeneration limit, which is essentially means that the volume of the torus is much bigger than one in heterotic string limits. Because in this case, I can, I can ensure that, uh, that my, my heterotic gauge bundle can be written in terms of this, uh, of, of this spectral data that I can extract directly from F theory. So for standard embedding, I am in the fortunate situation that the heterotic string actually has 2, 2 world sheet supersymmetry such that I can use standard mirror symmetry. And a further simplification is that the world sheet instantons in this case don't contribute to the superpotential in exact heterotic Kähler modular space, though of course I still have a gay genome compensate in the, in the unbroken E8 vector. So the modular space now has four dimension one singularities which in general are given by, by some, some complicated um, combination and intersection of multiple components. And the task is now to understand um, the, this, this, the structure of the singular locus for this elliptically fibered color B of threefold and extract from there the relevant information. So the discriminant locus is a function of the ex exponential Kähler moduli, or better to say by the exponentiated GLSM FI parameters, which are essentially related to the Kähler module by, by the mirror map. The particularly relevant part is the principal component of the 
or for me of of the um, of the discriminant locus, which can be explicitly calculated using very well known methods, and also for zero to comma two generalization generalizations of this, there are um, there are methods to extract them. These are essentially the if if the if the module if the tangent if the bundle of the heterotic bundle is the deformation of the tangent bundle. So if Z three is a smooth Weierstrass model, which we which is which is reasonable to assume. If our heterotic string should have an F theory dual, we essentially have this structure where we have a polynomial of the fiber modulus and some uh, and 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 an order Q1, QI corrections due to the base model. The mirror model now tells us that the point where the point Q equal to one over 432, which lies and locus if we switch off these guys, this tell this is nothing but the limit where the torus shrinks to zero size. If we now turn on the other moduli, actually the singularity splits in, 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 uh, in multiple components depending essentially on the churn class of the base. So this can then be interpreted as giving a quantum volume for the torus. For instance, if the base V2 is just a P2, you can evaluate um, this, the change or the split in the, in the, in the discriminant locus, and you will find such a relation. And so we essentially see that the volume, that the, that the quantum volume of the torus is an exponential function of the volume of the base um, uh, curves. Or inverting this relation to first order, one can infer minimal volumes for the base, for the curves in the base, which are essentially now given by the, the whatever we assume as classical volume of the T2. Um, so what is the meaning of this principal component of the singularity of the discriminant locus? We know from our from type to A that, the, that on this locus, the central charge of the V6 brain wrapping the entire Z3 vanishes. So essentially the central charge, which perturbatively is given by this expression vanishes. Now, if we have standard and then or slight deformations of the tangent bundle or variations thereof, we know that essentially one of the bundles can be identified with with the D6 brain in type 2a. So we can identify the central charge of the type 2a brain, uh, D6 brain with a complexified gauge coupling of the unbroken gauge of the heterotic string, and such that, in fact, the, the, the uh, principal component of the discriminant focus corresponds to a strong coupling singularity. One can now look at, okay, the additional, the additional of course, components of the, the singular locus. I have written this, this is for instance for P2, the diagram. And one can now see if essentially that uh, we have additional components corresponding to the corrected Keller cone, uh, where the zero section of Z3 vanishes, which essentially just amounts to a shift of the, uh, of the Keller cone. But that the, the theory did, uh, behaves quite different at this different singular locus delta one and delta two, for instance. For instance, if you could calculate the correlators of the C twisted CFT, you will see that the word sheet CFT is only singular on the principal component, which just reflects that on the other, we, we don't expect a strong coupling singularity. So if essentially we always have the case that um, uh, if, if our Q is small enough, we always have that the relevant singularity is delta one equal to zero. And this also holds for, for deformations of the um, tangent bundle, which I don't want to dive in here. So we need to translate this structure now to the singularity structure in the dual F theory modular space. And in fact, we have here, we have the linear multiplets, which are essentially just the volume of the curves and volume of curves in the base B2. And we want to go to the decoupling limit. Essentially, this curve becomes very small while keeping the other Caleb parameters sufficiently large. So since we expect the shift symmetry to be broken, we need to actually consider the dual scalars, which are the volume of the zero section of, of, of this base B3 and the volume of vertical devices. The duality to the heterotic string with standard embedding now tells us that we have an EA group on the zero section S minus and an E6 gauge group on S plus. And we need to ensure that the adiabatic limit is um, holds. In fact, Actually, to apply all this mirror mirror uh, symmetry business, we have to translate the, spe the the spectral data of our of our heterotic compactification into an, into actually the tangent bundle on the modular space. So we have to perform two t dualities, such that we actually have to look at small volumes 
um, on the heterotic side. So we end the regime actually where, where, where we have small, small fiber volumes. So heterotic f theory further tells us that we have to identify the heterotic header moduli um, with, the, with, these, with the volumes of the vertical um, devices of f theory. And that the coupling of the E8 group is not essentially just given by the volume of S minus, which is just an embedding of the B2. And in the decoupling link groups, in the decoupling limit, we can now have now the question: Can we um, can we go with our with our with our Kähler moduli to zero or not? So essentially, can we can we reach here? And so we see that the relevant from the F theory perspective, the relevant singularity is delta one equal to zero. So we expect the singular locus also an F theory from this from the dual um, heterotic perspective. But what is the dependence on the on the coupling as minus? Is there is there a, is there a dependence or not? So we still don't do not have the full non perturbative information in F theory, but we can still use some information from the heterotic side. For instance, we found that in the heterotic to leading order, the relation that we cannot actually shrink the base curves to arbitrarily small volume, but we always are obstructed by the presence of the, of the, of the singularity delta one. This should be also visible in F theory. So we can look at the perturbative F theory corrections, which we investigated here. And you have about we can, four minutes. Okay. You have about four minutes. Okay, thanks. And um, we can we can uh, we can study can we can we retrieve this perturbative or this this leading this leading term um, also in, in in the in the F theory. And in fact, one can by using that on the principal component of the singularity, the E eight becomes strongly coupled. So we impose this, and we then find the the minimal volume. Of, of, of vertical devices here, I just took the P2 example, to be precisely given by, 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 by this logarithmic term times uh, normalization that depends on the one loop corrected gauge coupling that we investigated in this paper. So we find a minimal volume for the vertical divisor. And in fact, it depends on the, uh, it depends logarithmically on, on this parameter T naught H that is essentially related to the stable degeneration uh, limit on the heterotic side, but also on the one loop corrected age coupling um, uh, for, for the E8. So we reproduce the logarithmic dependence on the stable degeneration parameter or the torus volume, but we have a non-trivial dependence on the one loop corrected coupling. So when we now ask what is, this, what is the consequence of the singularity in F theory, and here I have to skip due to uh, lack of time, I have to skip a little bit ahead because the question is now what happens to this three string that um, we initially had that gives rise to the, to the weak coupling limit. So this is three string essentially um, has, has a, as its world sheet theory, the nonlinear sigma model, which we know becomes, uh, becomes uh, singular on the singularity. So we, we expect that this string actually is singular on the on the limit uh, on, on the singular locus and one can actually make this more precise let me just skip ahead i have unfortunately to skip through all this and we can look at the moduli space again and we can look at the back reaction of this d3 string that essentially gives us a as similar to the dlt strings i mentioned before that gives us a that gives us a back reaction essentially in the vertical direction giving given embedding of uh, of the of the transfer space to this to the string in this vertical direction, which gives a which defines a vertical two cycle, which I indicated here in green. Since delta f depends on this on this parameter as norm, this this two cycle necessarily intersects with this with this singularity. And now one can show that if one looks at the back direction of a circular D3 string, if we go in this in this shaded region, Actually, the tension that one can, cal can calculate through the back reaction does not correspond to the D3 strip, D3 brain on C0 anymore, just alone, but we will nucleate an additional string associated to the singularity delta one equal to zero. So this means actually the D3 brain string, the tension of this, of this string obtained by the D3 brain becomes superplankian, but we can regulate this, this uh, superplankian. Uh, Attention by introducing an additional string associated to this delta one equal to zero, and so this is gives an 
consistent picture because we have the, the D3 string world shift theory it becomes singular at data at one equal to zero. And we additionally have that if we look at the backtrack and try to calculate the tension of the, of the D3 brain on signal, that it actually becomes super and that the D3 brain uh, leaves the spectrum. So um, let me refresh my main three points that I wanted to convey in this in this talk. So we found that there's non perturbative strong coupling singularity in the string theory limit of FC. I did this via an analysis of the dual heterotic Keller modular space in the case of standard embedding or like slight variations of that. I found there's strong coupling uh, singularity for the D7 brain gauge theory, which matched our expectation from the perturbative analysis in this previous paper. I, I didn't have much time to discuss this, but it's, one can also describe the back reaction of NS5 brains and or D3 brains away from the weak coupling limit. And the regulation works through the, addition, through the inclusion of additional strings associated to the modular space similarities, which I tried to make clear in the case of the D3 brain. And the back reaction corresponds to a two cycle in modular space, essentially that, we, that, that is given by the asymptotic string charge, which always has subplanking area. And the tension of this string can be, can be associated to the linear energy density of this back reaction. And this tells us that the D3 brain string might leave this light string spectrum if we hit such a singularity, because essentially we calculate the tension of this string. And this, and in F theory, this means that at the strong coupling singularity, the critical string in fact leaves, leaves the spectrum of light strings. And this is associated to the, to the um, this gives us the obstruction that we observed at the perturbative brain. Thank you. Thank you, Max, for the nice talk. Um, any questions for Max? Okay, so Marcus. Yeah, so uh, thanks a lot for the talk. Sometimes there is this uh, correlation between singularities on the moduli space and objects that you have to include in the sense there is even a swampland conjecture that pi one of moduli spaces have to be uh, has to be zero uh, is that do you think that's related so basically you you start with uh, you punch out your singular points in the moduli space and uh, then you fill it back in again by including those new strings that you find in order to regulate the, the tension of the first one I think that's that's uh, related, yes. So that you that you essentially trivialize this there. Yeah. Okay. 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 So Timo, thank you. Um, so, so if I understand correctly, you say the original string from the D three on on the P one fiber becomes heavy, mm -hmm. and uh, which is the um, origin of the singularity. So so could you say again what now the consequence? for the theory is what, what, what type of theory do, do, do we now get? Does something else become light that takes its form or what, what's actually the nature of the theory there? Um, so, so I would, so my, the perspective, sorry, I didn't have much time to, to explain the, um, the, the general picture there, is that on this, the singularity, this corresponds to some non-geometric string that we have. So for instance, um, you can al already see this in the heterotic string on the printed or something. You have the, you have the, you have the conifold singularity that, that nucleates, I, I, had, I had this, um, I had, that essentially nucleates a string in the center of the backbridge. So we have, we have the original D3 brain or NS5 string, the blue one here in this, in this case. And in the center then, once we go out of the, the or once we cross over the singularity, we, we nucleate an additional string. So the tension that we then calculate actually through the back reaction is the is this tension of this of these two objects together. So we once we nucleate, we get an additional tensionless string, this red string here, that then that then nucleates. And so the extra string in this theory is, is the is the is the bound state of the, the system of this thing. This is similar in spirit to what happens in 60. Once we go, once we if we have F theory on an elliptic vibration over over a heatable surface, and we shrink the curve, uh, the, the base P1, essentially the this, this string on the, on, the, on the upper, which is the heterotic string, is as tension of order one in Planck units. And the string that we have in the end is not the original heterotic string, but it's the bound state of these two. Yeah. So this is essentially the, the 4D analog of this. But here, of course, we have to take all this non-perturbative correction to account. 
And um, so, because it's essentially also the, the zero section is what vanishes in the F theory, which yeah. by future non perturbative effects, whereas in 60, it's also the zero section. So, just the, just the, 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 the base P1 that shrinks. So, it's essentially, it's the same picture. Could, could I ask one more question? Yes. Very quickly, since you said uh, indeed the, se the section shrinks, so the D3 brain in, in F theory, the D3 brain on the section would be an NS5 brain in, in on the hydrotic side. Is that effect um, important here? In 60. For the obstructions? In, in, four, in 4D. The D3 brain instanton on the section as minus would be an NS5 brain instanton on the. So, uh, it is not so for the. It, um, exactly that shrinks, but this should this should correspond on the heterotic side to the to the gauge instanton in the E8 in the exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So what one could think is now that this somehow resolves the singularity, similar to to the to the hypermultiplet modular space where the where the where the light instanton resolves the singularity. Mm -hmm. But in this case, we have that it's it's the gauge instanton in the eight groups are expected to contribute to the super potential. So in the kinematic story, it shouldn't change anything. So in the modular space with before. So in the naive modular space, before taking into account super, super potential corrections, um, it shouldn't change anything. It shouldn't resolve the singularity as in the high modular space. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, so I think uh, we should move on to the next talks. Let's thank uh, Max again for the great talk.